This is the, this is the love of God. That as Jesus was there suffering and being beaten, he was then stood up and he was given the larger, well, he was taken back to the crowd and a few more rounds of this went on and they called out for his crucifixion. Pilate thought, if they're bloodthirsty, I'll give them some blood and they give to him this scourged, disgusting, brutalized human being and he says, behold, the man. And they call out even then, give us his blood, we want crucifixion. Pilate in cowardice gives to him the, the crossbar of the cross and makes him carry it up the hill. He can't make it. His, his mouth is parched. He hasn't drunk anything in 12 plus hours. He's, he's, he, 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 he's losing blood and fluids all over the place. His brain is dehydrated of electrolytes. He cannot make sense of what is going on. He faints and they get the African Simon of Cyrene to carry it up the, up the, the hill for him. And Jesus hobbles along behind, limping. And, and when he's there, they lay him down on the cross. They tie his arms and his legs down. And they put these, the huge nails, we, we know the type, right through the, the bones, through the veins, through the nerves, through the ligaments of the wrist on both sides. His, he would be in, involuntarily convulsing at this point because of pain, dehydration, and the striking of the nerves. One through his feet, they put a sign above his head, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews, in all languages, so that everybody can read it. The Jews didn't like that, but Pilate said, put up with it, that's the sign I've made. And how, how ironic, how true it actually was. The God-man is the King of the Jews. The God-man is not just King of the Jews, he's King of the universe, and this is how he receives his kingdom. And there he is, he was put up onto the cross, the, the, the beam set in its place, probably naked, possibly covered, urinating, bleeding, sweating, suffering. The theologians call this a very apt uh, uh, title for this section of his ministry called the humiliation of Christ. It is absolutely, incomprehensibly humiliating. He might have been at eye level. That's how many people, uh, uh, criminals were crucified at eye level so that you could mock them and jeer them and spit on them. Maybe he was lifted up higher. We don't know. But Jesus was utterly utterly humiliated and at no point are we allowed to think that he was being forced, he was not being subjected, he was subjecting himself, he was humbling himself to the point of the death and even death on a cross, Jesus was volunteering, Jesus was our saviour, the God man, yielding to the will of God for our salvation, John says that this, in this the love of God was made manifest among us. This is, the, this is the first point that we're going to uh, seek to understand as we see this battered, disgusting, bloodied God-man on the tree. And your question will be, why? Why this? Or, or, or what could we consider of this? What does this teach us? And the first thing that John wants us to know is that this is the love of God for you. And I'm speaking especially to you who are unsaved, invited here by a friend. Maybe you've grown up in a Christian household. Maybe you've been called a Christian. You're, you're a, even a baptized member and, and you even know some stuff. But you know deep down you are still in your sin. You are far off and you are not a true Christian. Were you to die this afternoon, you would not be met with open arms of the Father. You would be cast into hell. Friends, my love, my heart, my thoughts, my prayers are for you right now. In this picture of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, John tells us, inspired by the Spirit of God, that on the cross the Son of God was showing us the love of God the Father. 